right, guys. Welcome back to the Barren Grounds by David A. Robertson. We are on chapter 26. And the kids have to return back home to Katie and James's house in Winnipeg. As Morgan said, we have people waiting for us. They too have responsibilities to other people, okay? And Morgan is realizing that. She's saying, like, imagine if they stayed in Mizwa, how, how would Katie and James feel? How, they would never know where the children are. They would never, they would have, have no idea, idea and their hearts would be broken. And so, yeah, Morgan's res realizing their responsibilities as well, not only to Mizwa, but to Katie and James. Okay, chapter 26, page 230. Morgan and Eli left Mizwa behind, their path ahead illuminated by a line of villagers carrying torches and standing at the beginning of the barren grounds where they would send them off. They had their own torches for when the villagers' lights dimmed and Eric was with them. The squirrel had insisted on accompanying the children, the kids, not because she was worried for their safety or because she thought that Morgan was actually afraid of the dark, but rather because she found them such good company. The barren grounds weren't as intimidating now that the white time had ended. It was a flat and uninhabited land that stretched wide from east to west and appeared to lead right into the horizon. Upon careful inspection, Morgan could see the mountains to the far west, and it made her replay the last days of their journey in her mind. She tried to find the sequoia, a landmark for those memories, but wasn't able to. Ahead, she could see the northern woods, like a thin strip of green Velcro, holding the sky and land together. What's to the east? Morgan asked. She could see nothing in that direction. It was as though the barren grounds kept going right through until hitting the sky. A sky, Eric answered simply. Yeah, but what if we were walking through a field where you live and I asked you what lands were to the east? Eric asked. Ontario, I guess, Morgan said. And is that all? Eric asked. No, the whole world's after that, until you come right back to Winnipeg. Well, Eric said, the whole of a sky is to the east. There are many more lands and many more beings before you end up right back where you started, here in Mizwa. Morgan tried to imagine just what the rest of Askai was like, what other villages were like there, and what other creatures. Had any other humans gone anywhere else in this world? Were they still here? How? What are you thinking about, Esquesis? Eric asked. Nothing, Morgan said. Just that now we have time to breathe, all of this is sinking in. This place, it's real. And now we have to leave. You know, you said that a week here might be an hour or so back on your world, right? Eric asked. Yeah, she said. So you could even come back tomorrow night, your tomorrow night, and stay here for a month and explore. Eric could hardly contain herself we're going to, right, Morgan? Eli asked. So Eric says, we'll just come back tomorrow night. You can stay all night long for a whole month here in, in Mizwa, and you'll be fine. Then you go back in the next morning to Earth. Morgan didn't feel the excitement that the other two had, and she didn't know why. They could come back. By tomorrow night, maybe in 15 hours, it would just be, well, she didn't know the math, but months. 
Eric would still be here, Mizwa. Ironically, maybe by then it would be winter again. But when it was supposed to be winter, she didn't know why she felt upset until she said, I just don't want to forget what happened. This is a big theme, especially in Morgan's life. Don't forget. Do you remember those pictures across the walls of the council hut? Eric asked. Morgan did. Yeah, they were like wall paintings, the way people used to communicate before we had words. She could picture them, simple, dark, ochre paintings that formed something completely beautiful. Why do you think those pictures are there? They're stories, aren't they? Eric nodded. They tell the story of this place of Mizwa, so that our history is never forgotten. A story brought us here, you know, a picture, Eli said. Stories always lead people somewhere, Eric said, to a place, to a memory. Morgan knew then what Eric meant. I should write about what happened so that I won't forget it. Mrs. Edwards popped into her mind she did have a poem due. And so that you won't forget yourself, Eric winked at Morgan, put her arm around Morgan's shoulders, and they kept walking. But you know, come back too, of course, for new memories, that is. Sometime in the middle of the night, they came to the great tree. Morgan found that the protection she placed over, over the portal was untouched. The board still hammered securely into the trunk. The hammer was on the ground in front of the tree, once buried under snow, but now in plain sight. Beyond the tree lay the northern woods, which, according to Ochek, nobody had been in for many, many years. She imagined a group of animal beings sleeping right where she stood now and a giant coming out from the forest and taking the soul of the elder it made her shudder have you ever seen mr pew she asked eric hearing the name eric shuffled back a few inches as though that might protect her if the giant showed up i think if i had seen it i wouldn't be here with you today and she added I'd prefer not to see it ever, if I have a choice in the matter. You know, Mr. Pew is in our world too, Eli said. Well, tell, tell it that I say hi, Eric said. Seriously? Morgan asked Eli. Like, you don't mean a grainy video from a million miles away, right? You mean actual, real, live Mr. Pew? People in my community have seen it, Eli said. I thought those were just legends, like my books, Morgan said. Like, there's really no such thing as a, uh, oh, wait, are there talking lions here? Eric nodded. Okay, strike that, she said. I guess what I mean is, I haven't seen Bigfoot in Katie and James's house in the last two months, and there aren't sightings in the city. So how do they get all the way through the city, into the woods, never mind the attic? Eric leaned back and looked at the sky thoughtfully. You think that this portal is the only one? Interesting. Morgan's head jerked towards Eric. What? There are more? I mean, Anything's possible. Eric peered into the dark, uh, darkness of the thick ancient forest. Nobody has been in the northern woods for generations. So who's really to say? Ever since the elder's soul was taken? Eli asked. Uh, hey, Eric said. And they never even made it to the woods either. There are no stories of Pisiscoac that I ha that have. Now that would be an adventure, wouldn't it? Morgan asked. 
Be my guest, Eric said. I'm perfectly happy right here. On second thought, Morgan said, I'm all adventured out. Maybe tomorrow night, Eli said. Maybe tomorrow night, Morgan echoed. She picked up the hammer and pried the boards away from the tree. One by one, the boards were placed on the ground, leaning against the trunk of the great tree. And little by little, the attic was revealed. What's earth? Eric asked. Yuck. I mean, that's a room on earth, Morgan said. There's a little more to it than this. Yes, I was just thinking that I thought it would be bigger, Eric said. <laughs> Morgan placed the hammer against the tree alongside the boards for next time. Won't those construction guys wonder where their hammer is, Eli asked. They might if they ever actually showed up. With the portal open, there was only one thing left to do, but nobody really seemed to want to do it. So for a long while, all three of them just stared at each other. Then without warning, Eric pulled both Morgan and Eli into an embrace. I'll miss you both, she said. We'll miss you too, Morgan said. I won't see you for months. But you'll see me tomorrow, Eric said. It'll feel like months, Eli said. I am very miserable, Eric said. Miserable, Eric said. But I'm certain you'll survive. She helped Morgan and Eli through the portal back into the attic. The attic had dried out, and there was no reason to worry that the cold would creep into their foster parents' bedroom. It was probably warmer in the attic than it was outside. Outside in Winnipeg, maybe not in the North Country. But why is it all dried out? Morgan asked out loud. It's been the green time for what, a day? Wouldn't that only be like 10 or 20 minutes on earth? She rubbed her feet against the plywood floor just to make sure she wasn't imagining it, then bent down and touched it. It was dry as a bone. Okay, so Morgan's saying, wait a second. There must be a space around the great tree, including your little room, where our times intersect, Eric said. It's probably why I'm not moving 10,000 miles a minute right now in your eyes. That's so weird, Morgan said. It was true though. Eric was on a sky, she and Eli were on earth, but they were all in the same time. If that's the case, Eric said, we could just sit here and chat forever if you wanted, but they really couldn't. Even if the attic was in Miswa time, by the light coming in through the crack between the door and the floor, Morgan could tell the sun was rising. Morgan, morning was coming whether it was Miswa or Earth time, and that meant Katie and James would be up soon. We will see you again, right? Morgan turned back towards Eric. Oh, I know you will, she said. How? Eli asked. Call it a hunch, she said. Now, I'd best be off. Ms. One might fall apart if I'm away for too long, you know? Eric blew them each a kiss, then scurried off on all fours. Morgan and Eli watched her go, until suddenly she darted out of view. Morgan pinched the corner of the drawing. Do you want to, or? No, Eli said. You can. Morgan nodded and pulled the paper away from the wall. In an instant, a sky was gone. The two of them inspected the drawing. It was new, just like the last time it had come off the wall. The barren grounds were dry and uninhabited, but across them, in the distance, you could see Eric on her way to Mizwa. You could see the forest, lush and green and alive. You could see the village, and finally, you could see a line of lights in front of the collection of longhouses. All the animal beings with their torches raised, seeing the humans home. All right, that's the end for this chapter. Bye guys.